So I just, I really wanted to just talk to you guys about the festival, talk to you guys about the year that you guys have had, and just allow um, people who are tuning into the festival just to get a little more insight into both of you guys and you guys' careers. So if you can just kind of introduce yourself for the sake of the audience and kind of give me just a little overview of your background and how you got started in this particular genre of music. Okay. Um, I'll let Lady go first. I know you were going to say that. Yeah. Uh, my name is Carla Prather, and I am a singer, songwriter, recording artist from Chicago, Illinois, born and raised. Um, I've been in the industry for 20 plus years, um, and I really started out in house music, really with um, Byron and a few of the others from the Chicago crew, I'd like to say. Um, came in as a songwriter and a vocalist uh, down on Kinsey with. Byron and Terry Hunter, Mike Dunn and Ron Carroll, we were all down there kind of honing our craft at the time. And fast forward 20 plus years later, I'm still at it, you know? So my background is really house music. I also um, perform with an alternative band and uh, I do a little bit of soul as well, gospel. I kind of run the full gamut with my, um, with my uh, singing ability, I should say. So it's definitely a pleasure to be here and thanks for having me. And uh, I'm Byron Stingley. I've been in uh, I've been uh, in the recording industry since I was a kid. Uh, I played in bands all throughout Chicago, all through high school. I was playing it in bands. I used to, funny thing. I used to always sing at uh, Bishop Don Juan's Christmas parties every year as a kid. That, that's pretty. That was pretty entertaining. But uh, so I, I was. But I also was a club kid, and I, I've known. Like Jesse Saunders and uh, and Wayne Williams since I was since I was a kid, and I used to always try to meet them down at the club so I could carry their records in, so I could try to get in free. And yeah. Jesse, I would carry Jesse's records in, and then he would he would tell me like a dollar off or something like that. And I'm like, them records used to be heavy. So, but uh, Vince Lawrence is the reason that I do house music because I was a club kid, but I played in all these bands. And one day Vince Lawrence came to me and he said, Hey. You know, you play music, you play in bands, you record, you know, you do R&B and, and playing these. I, I was playing in actually in a punk rock band. And he said, well, we need to create our own sound and be part of our own movement. And he said, I think if, if we all do this and that, we, we could, uh, what was the word he used? He said, we can uh, be trailblazers and, you know, we can start our own movement. And I was like, wow, that sounded, sounded really cool. And he was like, uh, we're all going to let's all do house music. And from that point on, I've done house music. I was the lead singer uh, of a group called Ragtime. And then we uh, transitioned into uh, the group 10 City. And then uh, from there, I was a solo artist on Nervous and on Polydor Records. I have had top 10 pop records in Europe with 10 City and I've had several uh, top 20 pop records as a solo artist throughout the world and four billboard number one records. And it's an honor to uh, be asked to be part of one of the biggest, um, biggest uh, festivals in my hometown of Chicago and be part of house music. And, uh, you know, to watch these guys who helped start this movement uh, and to see what it's grown to, uh, not just in Chicago, but all over the world. And to be a part of that is just, to me, it's just, I, I can't say enough about it. Mm -hmm. Well, you both have had a, a breakout year with some some hits, especially uh, the um, Never Fall in Love with a DJ. So I have to ask you where the inspiration came from, the lyrics, because it's being played everywhere. And it's one of those <laughs> things that you, you never know when something's going to pop and why it does, but it just did. So. What were what was the motivation behind that? Well, I did just tell you that I grew up with uh I grew up with Jesse and Wayne and and, and those guys. So uh, anyhow, no, but it would always <laughs> no, <laughs> but it would always be. <laughs> so I I wrote that song, but it was like it would always be some some people had used to have crushes on the DJs back in the day. They always had crushes on the DJs and it was 
uh, I would always be the guy standing off in the corner that they would come and tell how much they like Jesse or Wayne. And, and I would just be like, yeah, you know, couldn't say too much, but I, I would just say it'll be all right. You know, he's he's working right now. He's he's he's, he's DJ and he's at work. What you expect? Well, right, I right. came to the club, but I just wanted him to say hi. It's like, well, he, he, he's working, all right? So, you know. I mean, and that, I wasn't one of them guys who would be like, oh, you know, come here and let me comfort you. So mm -hmm. I wasn't that kind of guy. So anyhow, I, I just decided years later to uh, write a song about it. And then Carla had the perfect voice for it. And I know she would really feel the lyrics because I know she's experienced that at the time or two uh, herself in life as well. So. Okay, Byron. <laughs> I was like, hold on, don't say all my business. Look. I know, right? I said, now you're going to have folks guessing. See, look at you, Byron. Sorry, stuff. But no, I just but thought it was so funny because as soon as the song came out, like, every DJ I know was like, wow, oh, they started playing it. And I was like, man, it's a lot of people that can relate to this. So many. And you're right. They have crushes. They still have crushes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and, and, and just recognize the like, passion that people have, you know, for their craft. And sometimes feeling like you get left by the wayside, you know? So it doesn't just apply to being a DJ, just to any um, area of interest that you have where, you know, passion exceeds what your availability, I should say. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, That's I'm right. really happy with the success of the record. Byron did a, a, an awesome job with, as far as songwriting and, and he really gave me a lot of direction in the studio too with how to how to deliver the song so that it was catchy enough for people to remember, you know. And so we're really happy with the success of it. You know, now we're just looking forward to continuing to promote it and getting it out there much more. I'm waiting for the clubs to open open up fully. So I just want to hear it out myself and, and see people dancing to it on right. the dance floor. You know? mm -hmm. I think it's so dope because usually with house music, people are so focused on the beat. And the fact that people, when you have a song with lyrics and people know them and they're singing them, you know, that to me resonates because our music, sometimes they're not listening to the lyrics as much as they're listening to the beat. So True. your voice was one of those voices that I listen to every word. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but um, again, we're really grateful to all the DJs and all of the people who have you know, really supported the record and, and gone out and really shared that it's out there. You know, we really, really appreciate them and we want to say thanks to them for their support. Now, this year is very different. Uh, obviously, Chosen Few Festival is virtual mm -hmm. and you guys will be performing. Um, I think it's a smaller audience, possibly. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the changes that you guys, because it's, it's different, you know, performing outdoors and in front of that crowd that's been out there all day versus performing in this small environment. How are you guys approaching that? Even though it's still a festival, you mm -hmm. still want to have a festival vibe. Yeah. I still haven't decided how I'm going to approach it yet. I'm, I'm trying to decide if I, even at the last, uh, not, you know, one of the things uh, I'm trying to decide if I should bring a couple dancers with me and we should work out old school dance moves and all of that at the, at the 11th hour or if I'm trying to decide because it is small and uh, if I if I should just get up and sing the songs, uh, you know, like devotion and that's the way love is and just sing it myself or, you know, or, or just the, but then, you know, like it's the chosen few. So you're wondering how many people are going to be watching if it's going to be thousands of people uh, tuning in to watch it. So you want, you want to give a, a good performance and things like that. So it, 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 it's making it a little more, you know, um, challenging, you know, like I just said last, I just had said last year, I was only going to do shows if I went out with a band and uh, went out with a, uh, a band and Kenny Bobby and we went out and did shows all in South Africa, Portugal with a full band and there's nothing, uh, nothing like that. But I don't know, this doesn't, is this with social distancing, this wasn't, wouldn't be, uh, a venue for a full band, but we want to get the best show possible uh, and have, just have fun. Right. And I was going to say that too, that is challenging. You know, it's, it's different when you don't have the audience's energy to feed off of. And of course, the chosen few, you know, boasts of uh, you know, millions of people who, who, who have tuned in, um, who have actually attended, I'm sorry, 
you know, so now we'll be reaching out to people virtually, which, which is a, a bit of a difference when it comes to the energy that the crowd brings, you know, so um, I'm with Byron, you know, just kind of stepping up to the challenge and trying to figure out what would make the best um, impact, you know, for the, the time that we do have with our audience. And then too, I think it's a great opportunity for us to be able to reach people all over the world who would not have ordinarily been able to attend. Yes. So that's the bonus side of it. And I think that's what gives me comfort I've seen people post, you know, now I finally get to go, you know, so I think that's a great thing. I think it'll give us all great exposure here in Chicago and give people an opportunity to check out what the Chosen Few Picnic is all about, you know, the virtual fest is all about. So um, that's the upside of it for me. And just really, you know, like I said, stepping up to the challenge of the performance with little or no people <laughs> in person, you know? Yeah, I think it's really interesting that I think because it's virtual, you guys have an opportunity opportunity to reach even more people right, right. and I know people like myself are all having these watch parties I'm having right. a, a socially distant watch mm -hmm. party you know at my house and then even the article that I wrote for them today I said we're going to kind of take it back to the way it started which was a picnic with a couple of friends and everybody's yeah, yeah. Doing, you know individually in their own backyards and yeah. hopefully be able to kind of capture that Mm -hmm. um, that same essence and that kind of same vibe um, with this festival. So I think you guys are actually making history, you know? <laughs> and That's a good way to look at it. I like that. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts about even being asked to perform this year? Because A, you guys are our hometown fave, so I'm always pro with Chicago <laughs> arts performing on oh, the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was, I for one was very honored because it's, it's a, an event that I've always wanted to do being a Chicago artist and, you know, you always want to be recognized by your hometown, you know, as someone who is, um, you know, making strides in the industry. And so being asked to do the picnic, I think is, is a kind of like a seal of, uh, of um, acknowledgement for us, mm -hmm. you know, as Chicago artists. And with us being in this quarantine phase of things, it feels good to be able to have something like this right here at home. We don't have to yeah. reach out and go to another city to do it, you know. So that's the beauty of it. It's almost like we are harnessing our talent that we have here in the city and kind of coming together, you know, showing the unity that we need to share right now during such trying times, you know. So for me, it's yeah. definitely an honor, especially with this record coming out. It's going to be a great way to promote it. You know, yeah. I new material, I'll be performing some new material as well. So I'm hoping people tune in and I hope they enjoy themselves, you know. Stay safe, but still have fun. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Any thoughts, Byron? How are you, how did they even ask you to perform or to be a part of it this year? Uh, well, I had talked to, uh, I was actually, uh, I was supposed to be doing a, a, a tour of Europe all this summer and, and lo and behold, uh, due to COVID, that got uh, that all got uh, that all got canceled. Mm -hmm. So I was actually I was actually like like wow. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do on the floor, mm -hmm. and uh, then I got a call from the guys and said, "Hey, we're going to do a virtual thing. Uh, do you think you could uh, be part of it?" And and I I actually would love to. This is one of you know for me like to have something in your hometown. You know, it's great to go different places in the world and to uh, be recognized in other parts of the world. But there's, there's nothing like, uh, you know, uh, feeling love from at home, you know? Uh, and I, I'm not gonna lie, but for a lot of years, you know, we would go different places to uh, other countries and, and uh, just house, house music DJs would go to different places and, and, and make tons of money and then, but what, come back to Chicago and, and you go from playing before thousands and thousands of people at festivals to sometimes coming home and only being in a small room. And right. so just to be like on the biggest platform uh, of any house music event uh, in Chicago is, uh, it just feels great, you know, uh, uh -huh. you know, and, 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 and to see all your friends, you know, I always take that line from this one record used to go, go bang. I just, I would just want to see all my friends at once. So that's, that's, exactly. that's my line right there. And so exactly. that's how I'm feeling, feeling really excited. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. thankful to the guys, Mike Dunn, uh, yeah. the Hatchet Brothers, uh, you know, Wayne, 
uh, Alan King. Can't say enough about Alan King. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and Jesse Saunders, you know, just the mm -hmm. whole whole crew, few crew. I have to ask you, as artists and, you know, performers, just like you said, with the COVID-19 pandemic, everything got wiped away. Every event, every party, every um, festival. As creatives, as people who are, you know, a lot of us have said it allowed us time to hit the reset button mm -hmm. and focus on some other things. And then the other thing that I've noticed is creatives have gotten even more creative. Mm -hmm. um, in this process, how did the pandemic affect your creativity? Did you have moments where it was like, I need to take a pause and not be creative at all? Or did you just kind of pivot into something different? Well, for me, it was, it was very hard because I have people calling me saying, hey, you know, I want to work on music with you, you know, now that, you know, now that you're going to be home because uh, a lot of people don't know I'm a, I'm a school principal during the week and on, uh, maybe once or twice a, uh, a month, I'll go out on a weekend and fly out on a Friday, do a show Saturday and come back. But so people knew I was home, the people didn't know, and people calling me to work on music. And it's like, it's very hard for me to write and get inspired with all, with all what's going on. And mm -hmm. I like to write songs that are happy and things that make people feel good. But I was filled feel with a lot of anxiety uh, yeah. myself and I'm actually, uh, doing a working on an album right now for Ultra Records, and they were like, "Come on, we want you to finish this album," and that was hard. But the process has been harder too because getting in the room with musicians and working with musicians has been uh, hard. So I've actually been doing sessions where you, one musician will email me their guitar part and have to fly that in, and the bass player and the keyboard player, and all the different people are emailing me. I even have. One of the background singers that uh, I use almost on everything, He's he comes in a lot, but he lives in L.A. And so he's been doing his parts in, at his home in L.A. and emailing, emailing it to me, and I have to fly it in and match it with our vocals. Carla does a lot of uh, session work uh, for me and, and just, you know, being in different places. People, it, it's weird because I actually just say this. Marshall Jefferson told me back when we started in – working in uh on devotion in 87 i remember him in the studio saying you know years from now about 30 years from now you aren't we probably won't even be in the same room i'll be somewhere in europe and england and doing my parts and and sending it to you over the phone line i was like man get the heck out of here you know but yeah he, he saw the future <clears throat> yeah yeah and i was gonna say for me personally um I've still been able to continue writing and recording, which is great. You know, the time being at home um, has given me an opportunity to really, like Byron said, uh, for folks to reach out and get some, some things done musically with me. Um, but I think more so what has impacted me is the loss of friends with the COVID-19. A couple of my band members actually passed. Um, Kahari Parker, who was an awesome drummer. Terrence Lee Sr., who was an awesome bass player. You know, so in the process of really healing from the pandemic, there are a lot of losses that we're taking, um, right. different individuals that have passed on. And so it really changes the landscape when you really think about just, you know, being grateful to have another day of life. <clears throat> and so for me personally, I'm, I'm like Byron, my inspiration really comes from life experience. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm trying to really stay away from writing emotionally because I want to write, like he said, songs that are happy. And right now, you know, emotions are all over the place. You know, so I'm hoping that that will be a part of the healing process, getting back out and performing and, you know, being amongst the people because that is healing for us as artists, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I just say, Ella, what's the, my dad is an actor and, I, and mm -hmm. obviously I'm a writer and performer and they all, my dad would always say, out of great pain comes great art. Right. So he always say in moments like this, because I feel like we got hit with a double whammy, you know, it's COVID-19, then it's police brutality, and it's, right. just, you know, and as a creative, it is almost overload, because you do right. write from such a real place a lot mm -hmm. of times, so how, if everything around me is, is negative and, and has right. me angry at times, how do I still put something out there that's right. going to make Get on a dance floor. In this case, dance. dance. 
<laughs> well, that's why. That's why to me this event is uh is so important right now because people need uh events and some positive things to look mm -hmm. forward to. I've had people calling me today. I mean, my phone's been ringing off the hook well, with people asking me, "Hey, what time are you going on? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I don't miss it. I'm gonna tune in. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna have my grill going in the backyard, and I can't." Yes, yes. so I'm looking forward to this, and that's mm -hmm. and that that's what's so great about you know house music in general and this event it it, it, it brings people together uh, mm -hmm. i mean fuel has been going on for decades and yeah. you know with the event this side people getting together in harmony and and things like that i mean it's a uh, it's uh it's just something else and that's why i'm also glad to be part of this music and part of this uh part of this event mm -hmm. you know we all uh need things to look forward to. My cousin had a, a comedy event out on a patio last week. He had comedians come out and and people were just so great, felt just so good just to it's be out and, yeah. and to it's have, have so, and, and it is like I said, this is gonna be great. Yeah, I yeah. Said, I'm having an event and I'm having eight or nine friends that I right. haven't seen so we're just so happy to see each other. Each other. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. Just some kind of interaction, you know? And it really aligns with what the festival is all about. The festival has always been a big reunion. It's always it been, is. you know, the time where you get to gather with your friends and enjoy those memories. So I think yeah. I feel we're still doing that. But also right. as a house community as a whole to even yeah. gather virtually. You yeah. know, I think it's, I agree. I think it's much needed and we could use some okay. good news and positive. <laughs> you know it, because we've lost all our festivals, all our, you know, Chicago is all about those couple of months of summer that yes. we have, you know, coming out and doing Pier 31. You know, there are a lot of different festivities that we like to go to and really let our hair down. And, you know, the quarantine has really been hard on all of us, really all over the world, you know. But yeah. like Byron said, the Chosen Few Picnic is going to be, I mean, Virtual Fest is going to be a good way for us to come together and show unity, you know. In, in house here and and for me it's I, i'm looking forward to it i'm so excited i've been getting the calls too so we're hoping that everybody gets a chance to tune in check out our show get your dance on all that all right and can you guys tell me what's coming from you guys new music new projects what are you guys yes. working on we got a bunch going on right byron uh well for me like i said i'm working on, i'm working on an album for uh for ultra records universal and that it will be out probably in the fall or in the spring. Uh, have to finish up the next two songs within the next next couple of weeks, and I'm excited about that. I'm working on a project with a group on Positiva called Cool, out of England, and uh, they're they're like a, a pop dance band. And so, and looking forward to working on uh, some new Carla Prather uh, material. Hey, that that man. Let me let me cabbage back <laughs> over here. <laughs> Yes, so that's, that, that's, yes. that's, that's enough right there. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I have a, a few um, solo, I mean, I'm sorry, singles coming out. One of them is called Real Good Feeling. It's uh, produced by the Funk Lovers and Must Three. It's coming out on Remy Music. It should be coming out in the next few weeks. Um, and then I have another tune with Seb Sikalski on Salted Music, Purple Music. Um, and that one is called Unstoppable. Byron gave me some input with that one. Um, and Really, I'm really looking forward to potentially working on my full-length album this year. That's the plan, hint, hint, Byron. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, that's the goal. I also have a remix of Let Go Out right now, Randy Peterson, Jihad Muhammad remix is a really nice. Um, and then Have No Fear, of course, is out as well. Both, all, of our, all of them are out on track source. Um, and Have No Fear is produced by Distant People, there's a Groove Assassin remix and an Ezel remix that are both out on track source right now. So current music is out and forthcoming music. And so I, love, I love to see Chicago artists working. I like Only to do I think, girl. Artists, I, you, I included, you. you included. You right. included, Danny, now. I got something coming in I July. Know you, <laughs> I know you do. Something beefy. Do with Immaculate. So okay. I'm looking forward to that one at the end of the month. So... Chicago artists doing it locally and around the world and That's still bringing right. products. So, congratulations right. to you both Thank on the you. 
album. I am looking forward to seeing you guys perform this Friday. I'm going to be on the chat. So <laughs> we're going to have some fun with it, you know? That's what it's all about. Cocktail emojis and virtual emojis to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be looking for him. Yeah, go ahead and put him up there, Danny. We'll be looking for him. Big shout out to DJ Immaculate, too. I just wanted to say Eric Welton. We all, of course, have worked with him and just want to make sure we shout him out. He's been doing his thing and, and much appreciated by all. Absolutely. And I okay. want to say a shout out to Marshall Jefferson and the guys from the group 10 City, who uh, Byron Burke and Herb Lawson uh, from, the, from my first group 10 City. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks, on Danny. <laughs> Thanks for having us. All right, you guys. Take care. I love. Bye-bye.